Okay, well, we're turning now to a business update, and we're looking towards the moon. We saw that two missions focused on returning there this weekend, one run by NASA and the other by the United Arab Emirates. And this has created opportunities for companies around the world. Our business editor, Charles Pellegrin, is here with more. Hi, Charles. That's right, Aaron. I'm going to focus specifically on the mission to bring an Emirati rover uh, to the moon because a Japanese private company is playing a big part in that mission. Now, uh, the company is uh, iSpace, and it is, uh, it's its first mission uh, to the moon. It uh, designed the lunar uh, lander that will safely bring the rover to the moon's surface. And it's expected to land sometime in April. And if successful, they would be the first private company to land on the moon. So far, uh, this had only been accomplished by global superpowers. The group was uh, created over a decade ago, now has over 200 employees around the world. It's one of many that have been created to service this moon economy. And they found a few different customers for this mission. Uh, its lander is also carrying other types of uh, cargo for other government agencies from the US, Canada, and Japan. Well, over the past decade, at least 22 companies have appeared uh, have appeared that focus on the moon economy, and just under $800 million have been invested in this space. iSpace's funding, uh, for example, comprises of just under $240 million coming both from equity and debt. The world's next economic boom could take place in outer space. And meanwhile, on Earth, postal workers in the UK have kicked off a month of strikes that will affect critical sectors this winter. winter. Uh, one of many industries that will be affected by industrial action. The government is, is even getting the army uh, to step in to try and limit disruptions. Camille Knight takes a look at what's at stake. A taste of what's to come. Thousands of Royal Mail workers gathered outside Parliament on Friday as they began a strike over pay and working conditions. We just want a pay rise in line with the cost of living. At the moment, what we're getting is actually terms of a pay cut. At 11%, British inflation is at its highest level in more than 40 years. And postal workers are not alone in their discontent. The UK is bracing for strikes across a number of sectors this month that people are realising that there is a structural imbalance in, in the UK of power, of wealth, and, and it runs right through the world of work, virtually in every decent job that used to be there. Nurses are planning on walking out for the first time in over 100 years, and passport control staff as well as ambulance drivers are also joining the wave of industrial action, pushing the government to call on the army to step in and to consider tougher anti-strike legislation. What I am going to do is ensure that I minimise the disruption to people's lives and make sure that we protect lives. Uh, and that's what we're working on right now with resi resilience and contingency plans, but also looking at tough new laws, which will help us do that. But with airports and railways facing potential gridlock, some may not be able to return home for Christmas. The Financial Times estimates that over a million working days will be lost to strikes in December as Britain faces what could be another winter of discontent. And these strikes on the horizon as the country is undergoing a cold snap and heavy snowfall to the extent that Stansted Airport in London had to cancel all flights because its runway was closed. Some flights at Heathrow and Gatwick also cancelled. The weather also led to heavy road and rail disruptions around the country. And the cold weather uh, will put pressure on the UK's electricity grid and on electricity prices. The country's grid operator said it's warming up two emergency use coal generators to deal with increased demand due to sub-zero temperatures. This is a backup option with the grid operator stating they will be available if required. Over the summer, the UK business department had to ask to delay closure of these coal units until after winter in order to boost the grid's resilience. Let's end by taking a look at the Asian markets this hour. Shares there trading uh, lower this Monday with investors looking ahead uh, to a Federal Reserve meeting this week in the U.S. and a likely rate increase as well, as well as more U.S. inflation data. As you can see, uh, the Nikkei in Tokyo down by two-tenths of a percent. The Shanghai Composite down uh, by 0.88%. Uh, uh, and the Hang Seng in Hong Kong with the starkest drop, uh, just over a 2% drop. And the Kospi in Seoul down by two-thirds of a percent. Well, earlier, France 24 spoke to Stephen Innes of SBI Asset Management about how the lifting of COVID rules in China and the subs subsequent rise in COVID cases is impacting the markets. 
It's just skepticism over that reporting. It's a very gray area. You know, they've stopped testing um, for COVID cases, and that's worrying. Uh, it's creating a lot of suspicion, a lot of uncertainty, the lack of transparency. You know, you look here at today's data, they said 11 new cases. <laughs> Come on. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more new cases if we're using Hong Kong and Taiwan as an example of the reopening narrative. So there's a lot of suspicion about what's going on in China right now. Not necessarily good for risk markets. Definitely keeping an eye on what's happening in China, especially uh, there's a question about vaccines and getting in new vaccines that are ad actually adapted uh, to the new strains of the virus. And that could be a, a big factor in how the epidemic goes there. Indeed, I imagine uh, in investors not only in Asia but worldwide are really anticipating and opening up uh, a loosening of those restrictions. Charles Pelligrand with Business. Thank you very much. Well, that's all we have for you for this edition. But stay with us. What would you do if you stood to inherit tens of millions of dollars? Would you reimburse your debts? Would you go on a shopping or traveling spree? Or would you lobby your government to take the vast majority of it away from you in the name of tax justice? Well, in perspective, I'll speak to an Austrian heiress who's pushing for the latter. That's to come with, of course, another roundup of the day's top stories in just a few minutes for you.